Hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. With me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. And tonight, we have just had a slobber knocker of a battle in Thor Ragnarok. And you know something? I think we have a new champion. I'm not even sure what slobber knocker means. Uh, basically just big battle. It's wrestling lingo. You know, JR, the king, uh-huh. WWE, used to be WWF. So we'll get back to the movie. And yes, that was certainly a popcorn flick. It had everything. Well, almost everything. It was missing a romance. And those of you who were dying to see another full film just to see Cat Dennings' Darcy, well, I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, I did miss Darcy. <laughs> Although on the subject of romance, we didn't see Lady Sif either. That we didn't, now that you mention it. We certainly did not. I mean, they, they had the Warriors 3, who were kind of finished off really quickly. But well, you didn't see Lady Sif at all. Yep. She wasn't seen at all. And we can be sure that she wasn't killed off in Thor the Dark World. Yeah, pretty sure. If we're wrong, leave us a comment and correct us. But yeah, we're pretty sure that she wasn't killed off in the, in the, the Dark World. So, yeah. Dangling plot thread there. But apart from that... Director Taika Waititi has gone all out on this one. Although, if I had to pick a flaw, I think some of the scenes might have leaned lean too much. Lean too much on the comedy. Just, just a little. I don't know. I think um, it's something that was missing from the other Thor films with sort of a sense of whimsy and comedy. Although. This one did seem to lean a lot towards, um, it was almost like it was a Guardians of the Galaxy film, but with Thorin. Well, perhaps they learned a lot from Guardians of the Galaxy, seeing that there have been two of those, and I think that uh, up until now, it was the previous champion of the ladder. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> we can't remember. But, you know, you listeners out there and viewers on YouTube, you have the benefit of going back and checking it out for yourself. Anyway, getting back to the issue at hand. I thought maybe there was like possibly too much going on, what with the whole um, Sakaar side of thing, and then the uh, the whole Ragnarok, Asgard side of things as well. Well, it did provide a good middle part for the film. Yeah, I didn't think any parts of it dragged. Uh, no. Nope. You know, some films, there's, there's lulls, but that just seemed to keep going in interest, even if it wasn't like a battle or something. It was something interesting going on. For anyone who's watched uh, that corresponding episode of The Whole Plate, and we're not talking about in a sort of Michael Bay way, where every single second is supposed to be as important as any other second at any point in it. But, you know, it just held the attention in that way. Yeah. Very bright, very colourful. For a minute, at one point, I thought Idris Elba was a bit too Idris Elba and not enough Heimdall, but then he kind of became more Heimdall later on, so it was okay. Yeah... I think, though, the Hulk was a little bit underused, and the plot that Banner and the Hulk, you know, they'd been body-sharing, effectively, essentially, up till now. And for, like, months and years, Banner's been able to uh, effectively keep it all under control, until, of course, the uh, incident on the helicarrier, and then the Battle of New York. But after that, and, you know, occasional necessary usages outside of that, up to and including Sokovia, it was always Banner in control, and now, for two years, it's been the Hulk, and only the Hulk. And as uh, the Hulk has taken over more control, he's been 
more intelligent, gaining rudimentary speech. Maybe he always had that speech, but we never saw it because he didn't really have a chance to say it. Uh, maybe, maybe. I think they kind of wasted that chance, though, taking the whole um, Planet Hulk storyline and kind of compressing it into this film. Whereas they, they kind of missed the trick. They could have done a new Hulk film based on that, I think, and it would have carried through, you know, because this film shows that they could do it. Yeah, and the thing about Planet Hulk, I reviewed the uh, animated adaptation way, way back in the midst of Series 1 of House of Love. Check it out after this video. I mean, it's nowhere near as comedic, the animated adaptation. It's very serious, but there's a good bit of Hulk smashing, and it only goes up to the point that the Hulk frees Sakaar from the Red King, whereas the uh, comic books actually go on to lead into World War Hulk. And they did kind of waste it, but at this point... It sounds like we're ragging on it a little bit. But, but no, but no, no, no. It's just a very minor point. Yeah. And the thing about it is that, really, the uni that Universal still holds the movie rights to a solo Hulk film. So they really need to massage that whole thing out. Yeah, but as it's shown with Spider-Man Homecoming and um, Sony owning the rights to Spider-Man. They've managed to get a deal for that. Yeah. They just had... Um, Sony showed their logo first, and then they played uh, that funked up Spider-Man theme over the Marvel logo, mm -hmm. so they could do that, you know. Yeah, it breeds more ho interest in the whole thing, and Universal, who own the Hulk rights, can do something with that. Yeah, and, and Sony can uh, make more money making terrible Spider-Man spin-off films, like um, Venom, starring Tom Hardy. Venom starring Tom Hardy. Yeah. Apparently. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's film, thing. Yeah. It was exciting. It didn't lag. Uh, it had a good sense of humour. Very bright, very colourful. Music was good. Um, ah, the music. Perform performances were good from all the characters, I think. The director uh, doing Korg was quite good. I wouldn't have played Korg like that myself, because he was supposed to be like a tough warrior-esque sort of person. That was one of my pet peeves with the movie, was that they played Korg so very, very comedically, and he's like a very serious character in the, the animated Planet Hulk adaptation and in the Planet Hulk comics. Yeah, I would have played him more like Warfare of Star Trek, but, you know, they, they had to, uh, and I mean, me didn't really get a big part either. This is like, oh yeah, this is my friend, he's an insect, he's got knives for hands. And of course, the thing about the Brood, who was also part of the uh, comic, but I don't think appeared in the um, animated adaptation... Well, the Brood are a recurring X-Men villain. So, yeah. <laughs> but we won't go into that one. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, I suppose, is a reason why they couldn't do it, because anything X-Men related is owned by Fox, so... That covers a whole gamut of things, I suppose. Damn you, Murdoch. I mean, they can't have uh, anything to do with the Shi'ar, either. I Which suppose. is a shame. Yeah, because um, when you're doing movies like Guardians of the Galaxy... For example, you know, they, they can't have, like, that's a whole galactic empire that they can't put in there. Yeah, and when are the X-Men going to go into space? Yeah, never. Probably never, yeah. Yeah, they're probably never going to face demons or anything. I'll probably just bang on about hate and prejudice and beat up all the mutants. Uh, maybe in the TV show, maybe some of that. But, you know, that's another thing. The thing I wanted to get to, uh -huh. before we get to the end of this, the music was by Mark Mothersbar. Anyone who knows Mark Mothersbar knows he's from Devo and also knows that he did the music for Rugrats. Oh, that Mark Mothersbar. I've yeah. I've never heard of him. Yeah, well, he did the music for Rugrats. He's, uh, and he used to be in Devo, which was uh, an experimental synth-punk band. Yeah, they were supposed to be big. Either. Really? Uh, you've never heard of a lot of people who's, yeah. who were supposed to be really big. Yeah, I've never Ask heard Will Wheaton. 
So that's a thing. Well, you know, some of the other music as well, like the battle music was a uh, uh, a pop song from somewhere. The immigrant song. Led Zeppelin's immigrant song. Right, there you go, Led Zeppelin. You can't go wrong with the Zepp. You really can't. I've heard of them. Yeah. Yeah, I once saw Robert Plant being interviewed in the very cinema where we saw this movie. Really? Yeah, in the Costa. Wow. Call to fame. I think the kind of um, intergalactic space side of things probably did give things a nice um, turn away. In uh, Even though, if it does make it a bit Guardians of the Galaxy-esque. Because, like, Thor 2 was a bit disappointing with some random characterless elves turning up. Yeah, random characterless elves. Yeah, and, you know, them just having the fight on Earth and Asgard and things, and it's just a bit dull. It was wasn't it great, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, this kind of livened things up a little bit. A little bit? A lot? Well, I mean, I suppose that's the thing with the, the Thor movie, so... I think they've each had a different director. Yep, they have. From Kenneth Branagh, legendary English thesp, to uh, some guy I never, I don't think I've heard of since or before for the second one. Yeah. And now Taika Waititi himself, who you may remember was part of the cast of Green Lantern with Ryan Reynolds. See, you say that. But most people can't remember what really what happened in that film. I just kind of like remember there was a Green Lantern film and it had Ryan Reynolds in and that's about it. Okay, so the rest of this episode got cut off because of technological errors. Essentially I pressed the wrong button on my phone and it stopped recording too early. But yeah. Producer liked Thor Ragnarok, I liked Thor Ragnarok, and perhaps you will like Thor Ragnarok. But that still leaves the question of where it goes on the ladder. Well, for that, tune in to my next podcast, Justice League, on the next Funky Monkey at the Movies. But before I leave you today, make sure to check out at least one, if not more, of the links below. Yes, I'm doing the e-begging and leave this video a like if you liked it. But for now, this has been Funky Monkey for my nameless producer, and I'll see you at the movies.